Let me see. Can y'all get it? Alright, it's feeding time for the rest of these dogs. Now I'm gonna move this back so y'all can see. Um, I did this video the other day and uh, a couple, I guess, a couple people didn't like the video just because the video disappeared. Oh well. But I'm about to do this again. Um, so what the rest of the dogs are eating today, I got a whole chicken for them. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and cut this up into pieces and uh, show y'all how we do this. Uh, whole chickens, like if you go to Costco or whatnot, you can get two whole chickens for about six bucks, right? And inside of those chickens has the little bags, has like the gizzard, the heart, um, the liver, and uh, the rest of the chicken. There. Yo, what is you doing? The rest of the chicken neck in there. So, you know, that's what, uh, you know, the dogs are fed. Ragnar, do you want to eat or no? So I'm going to go ahead and, and, and get this cut up, man, so y'all can check this out real quick. You know, so I have the whole chicken. Move. Move. Misha, get out of the way. All right, so you got the whole chicken. The way I do it is I take the the uh, the chicken back out. I take chicken back out. And with this chicken back, move boy. With this chicken back, I'm gonna split it in two, cause this has to go to two of the dogs. So I split that into two. And then you have your quarter leg. So you cut your quarter leg up. So you got your quarter leg. Same deal with the other side. You got your other quarter leg. Uh. <laughs> right on. What's up, son? If you come out, stand right there. All right, now you take the wings off the bird. Hey, yeah. get up here. Hold on, son, I'm talking with Facebook. You take your wings off the bird, so you got two wings. Now you just got the chicken breast. So what I do with the chicken breast, I split that down the middle. And what you do from there, I'm actually gonna take some of this flesh meat off this pregnant bitch, just in case she wants it. Get up here, boy. Dad, I heard a puppy. Yep. So I took a little of the, the, the breast meat off, just in case May Sean wants some. Um, you never know, she might decide, hey, I want some. All right, so that's pretty much it. And from there, let me turn this camera around. All right. Stop. All right, there we go. You just hand your dogs their cuts. Here you go. Here you go. Here, Sean. You want some? No. Dad, there's too many of Right on, man. Like, like I've been telling everybody, like, Misha, no. Like I've been telling everybody, a lot of my stuff is going to come off of uh, my kennel page now. Because, uh, Those who really want the information will actually come to me to seek it. Oh, yeah?
Let me see. And that's pretty much it. So the bird that y'all just seen me uh, feed my dogs is a three and a half pound bird. Um, out of everybody, she probably ate too much. But you know, it's all good. So that, that's it, man. Me should clean up, clean up. You know, you let her lick that up, and then I get me, um, you know, I cut my water hose on and put some bleach and soap in there and clean all that up. Yeah, I use pork. You did You darn straight. I use pork. Pork is a good, good protein source for the animals, and it's fairly cheap. Yeah. Can you open the door, son, so Dad can go in and wash his hands? Hold on, y'all stay with me, man, cause we we gonna talk for a minute. Let me go ahead and uh, wash my hands up real quick. But well, we gonna talk for a minute. Okay. And somewhere I put it. In. You just you gotta dump grease. You just dump it in this bucket. All right, let's go ahead and wash my hands, and then we gonna we gonna chop it up. Y'all got any questions um, about raw feeding? Go ahead and ask them up. And uh, you know, I'll take I take a few minutes to go ahead and answer them joints up. <laughs> but yeah, I use pork. Pork is a very, very, very good uh, protein source for your animals, and it's fairly cheap. Uh, what I like about pork is you can buy like uh, your your pork shoulders or whatnot, and you can debone them yourself. So I, what happens? Um, I only watch mine. Okay. When you debone them, you have that meaty bone left over. You have that meaty bone that's left over. Come on, sir. And uh, you can save that for another day for one of your dogs. You know, give them that. Um, no. You know. What? Uh, <laughs> you can save that for your dog. You know, um, put it to the side. Put it in a freezer bag. Save that. Your dog's going to have that on a different meal. Um, also with pork, one of the things I use a lot when it comes to the pork is pork ribs. And the reason I use pork ribs, hold on, son, because I'm um, I'm talking with Facebook. The reason I use pork ribs over um, over beef ribs is the pork rib bone itself is a little easier for the dogs to chew up. So that's something that I started at a younger age, and I continue to go through that. But once my dogs get about seven, eight months, I start to. I started to introduce them to, uh, you know, beef ribs, and, you know, that's just a little harder bone for them to chew up. Yeah, pork belly, man. Pork belly good for your dogs. Get get pork yeah. belly, get rolls, get picnic hands, get all that, man. You know, when it's cheap, get it. You know, it's, it's a good protein source. And what I tell people is, man, just because you may not eat a specific protein source, don't deprive I that to your animals. You know, don't well, deprive... You know, he... No, no, dogs don't eat no ravioli. No. You tripping. You tripping. You know, don't deprive your dog of a good of a good uh protein source of 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 uh pork. Help your dog do that. Eat and help the one super fast and eat the You good? You did? You did? Okay. Uh, the chicken you just gave them is that their second meal of for today. Move, Ragnar. Nah, that's they. That's the only meal for today. Um, earlier, hold on, son. Yeah, he is. The the meal, uh, the video right before this was uh, me making um, a red meat blend for Mei Shang, uh that has less bone in it, more fat to it. Uh, because she is in her sixth week of of uh, a pregnancy, you know, she she's grown, man. So I have to feed the dog a specific way to make sure that she thrives. And something else that I added into that red meat combination, which a lot of people are saying you got to give your dogs folic acid, folic acid helps this, helps that. I haven't had a problem with cleft palates or anything uh, with my dogs, but 
you know, as as I was thinking about it, get down, boy, and get from there. As I was thinking about it, I give my dogs broccoli and spinach when they're at, when they're about six weeks pregnant. You know, I give them a lot of it, and that's very high in uh, folic acid. I love you too. What else you guys say to the people? Okay. Tell them feed them right, keep them tight. You have to feed your dogs and help them. Yep. Help puppies out. What's some of their favorite foods? What's something that the dogs puppy. like? They like beef. They yeah. like beef and chicken legs. Yep. And. Everything. They like routine. They like vegetables too. And they like vegetables and cheese. Ragnar, go get your puppy. Yeah, any any questions, man? I I take time out right now to answer up some questions. Yeah, like. The chicken thing, like, I <laughs> I tell people all the time, man, utilize some of them um, international markets. But uh, those of you that go to, like, BJ's and go to Costco and, and places like that, remember they got, all right, one second, sir. Remember they got that double pack of chicken, them whole chickens, the I think they call them whole uh, frying hens or something like that. You know, get those joints, man. It'd be like two chickens for, like, five, six bucks. And, you know, if you got a single dog that's 50 pounds, you know, that's that's... That's three to four meals right there all for chicken. And I mean, they, take the advice or don't take the advice. Yeah, if you give your dog no advice, they don't go big. Yeah. And when they, if you get them rice, they can grow big. Yep, you give them some rice too. That's a filler. It helps them stay full, right? You got some gloves. I got one up on my nightstand. You can get it. And we have fruits and vegetables. You recommend, especially for young pups. Yeah. Um, pretty much the same stuff. It's when when it comes to pups, it's all about moderation. Um, like for for an adult dog, you might use like two, three tablespoons of fruits and vegetable mix. For the dog, for a puppy, you want to use like one or two teaspoons or one tablespoon, you know what I mean? But you want to watch the puppy. If the puppy is developing a loose stool, uh, it might be too much uh, fruits and vegetables in there. So, you know, you just cut back on that a little bit. But over time, um, you know, your dog, you start to notice your dog is able to, to consume a little more of each item and start, you know, increasing it. Um, some of the favorites that we use for our, our pups here is like um, it's kale and it's kale and carrots. One second, son. It's kale and carrots and uh, celery and apples and blueberries. You know, puppies tend to to like that. And what what I do a lot here is uh, if I don't have kefir to to mix the fruits and vegetables in, um, I use uh, yogurt. Whole whole milk yogurt, where I use whole milk cottage cheese, and uh, you know, puppies love it. Puppies thrive off it. What you guys say, son? Um, when they when you give them vegetables, they can eat it and make big. That why you need to get them vegetables. Yep, gotta give them vegetables. That's all the trace minerals, right? Mm -hmm. And all trace vitamins, right? Yep. Anything else? Hey, so Papa, let me see if you can get this one. So your 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 dog got a stomach ache, right? Yeah. Can you give them some mint? Yeah, you mm -hmm. can. And it makes their 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 stomach not hurt, right? How about um? How about if your dog has anxiety? Yeah. Um, can you give them some lemon balm? Yeah. Yep. I'm going to get it. So sure, you can get a piece to show everybody. Showing everybody, it's good for you. I have to go give it to my. Puppy. You want to give it to your puppy? Yeah, no. Uh, cottage cheese, I give about, I give about a, 
a little less than a full tablespoon yogurt, about the same thing. You know, um, and that's that's once every other day. You know, you don't want to give them too much yogurt. You don't want to give them too much cottage cheese. That's just something you give them to them once every other day. Um, as far as a pregnant bitch, uh, when when the bitch gets about five weeks pregnant, uh, I start to give the cottage cheese, and I give her cottage cheese. I give her about a tablespoon a day. And, you know, the reason I give her a tablespoon a day of the cottage cheese is because that is a very good uh, uh, fat source for them. What's that? It's mint. What's mint good for? Dogs. Yep, and what it helps with? It makes them don't have a tummy ache. Exactly. He got he got no choice but to learn that stuff at a young age. I mean, that's y'all gotta remember. That's what I talk about. You know, uh, when he was smaller, um, you know, he, I used to read a lot of, of dog books to him. You know, genetic books, um, genetic papers, um, health stuff for him, all that. Come here, Sean. What's wrong, girl? You ain't be out here too much longer. Move, Mimi. Sure, you can eat one. <clears throat> um, it's all about how you invest into your kids when it comes to this dog stuff, man. Like, I, I'm a dog man through and through. Uh, regardless if people say I am or not, you know, my knowledge base is, is, is very vast. Um, you know, and I, I, I know things that others don't know, which I'm not saying I, I want up on somebody, but I just invest that much time into furthering my education year by year about these dogs. Because, hey, Slim, stop. Stop. Because dogs... Things with dogs change weekly, monthly, yearly, you know, so you have to stay up to par on that stuff in order to make sure you're doing what's right for your dogs as well as the next generation of dogs, especially when, you, when you're considering yourself as a breeder. You must continue to educate yourself. You must continue to take corrective in its, uh, criticism. You must continue to, uh, you know, hold yourself to a higher standard than the rest to set yourself above uh, and beyond and, you know, separate from the rest. Yeah, you have one. Um, I mean, that, that's the name of the game, man. What can you do to continue your education to make sure that you excel in your program? And to me, the best thing that people can do is continue their education with these animals. All right? Um, it's your man, Chris Jones, Novocaine Kennels, man. My family is home. Thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, if you did not catch the video that's before this, it is on the council YouTube page. Um, this video will be on the council's YouTube page as well. Um, go back, review them, watch them over and over and over again. Get very familiar with them. Take a lot of notes on them. Keep that stuff in a, a binder, a folder somewhere so you can always run back to them. And I'm telling you, year after year, generation after generation, when you collect notes and stuff like that, the generations that come after you will read those notes and they will excel in life because you kept accurate records. Um, Anything else to say, son? And I'm um, out. Say Novocaine Kennels. We out. And we are out.